Good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome to Needles at the Ready. Yes, welcome. It's lovely to have you. It's lovely to be here. It's just lovely. That's great. I'm Kevin. I'm Ray. <laughs> we are coming to you from Stratford, Connecticut. We haven't said that in a while. No? I feel like we do. I don't All I the don't time. Know. Every single episode. I don't think 40 so. 40 times. I don't it's even know what episode we're on. Oh, me neither. Uh, 107 or 8. It's one of those. We be 107. Woohoo! And today is Saturday, March 16th, 16th. 2024. Yes, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. Oh, happy St. Patrick's happy Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. We're both Irish, so I guess we could celebrate. Yeah, but we don't usually. No, we don't do anything no. special. Mm-mm. I don't like corned I'll beef go and cabbage. Gro- I don't like cabbage. I enjoy corned beef. I don't know if I like corned beef either. And I like potatoes. I love potatoes. Maybe so, I'll just have potatoes. Well, I am cooking potatoes tomorrow. Perfect. Or maybe today. I don't know yet. I thought we were doing the roast today. Pasta doble. Yeah, but now your your our day just got busy. It did. So, mm. welcome. Hello. So, all the returning viewers, and well, welcome back to returning viewers, and welcome to any new viewers. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us. This is our YouTube okay, channel. Okay, don't, sp- if you speak like that. <laughs> this is our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting and crocheting and yarn dyeing and all the fun things that go along with that. Yes. So, <clears throat> thank you for joining us today. Say thank you one more time for joining us. It's thank worth thanking everyone for joining us. You today. know what? Thank you so much for I'm joining done. us from I'm the done. bottom of our hearts. It's a wrap. <laughs> so I hope you all are doing well. And let's just jump into it. Um, admin stuff. admin stuff, yes. So we have two, two make-alongs. Our first one is a kit-along. So that runs until the end of this month. Just do any kit. That's all. Make easy something peasy. from a kit. Doesn't matter what craft it is. Yep. We have threads on Ravelry. We have a chatter and an FO thread. And then our other one is the Stephen West clockwork knit along. So that is just to knit a clockwork in celebration of the time change here. The spring ahead. So that started on the 10th. Mm -hmm. And it will be running until the first day of summer. So sometime in June. June 20th, I think it's this year. I don't know. It's it's linked down below um, in our Ravelry group. We do have, like Kevin said, a chatter thread and an FO thread. Yes. And we have a hashtag on Instagram as well. It is hashtag NATR clockwork. clockwork. And, Easy, right? Yeah. And then we did get a question on the Instagram post. There are two versions of the clockwork. Mm-hmm. There is the original version, and Stephen West has also released a brioche. So both are welcome. Feel yeah. free to do either. I wanted to do the brioche one. I think eventually, I, I I think I'm I'm just craving some brioche lately. I haven't done it in a while. I'm craving brioche bread. Mmm. Let's not talk about food. So yeah, so that's going on. We'll show we showed our finished uh, clockworks last week. There's a thread on Instagram um, and Ravelry that has pictures. I kind of created a little, um, like what's it called, logo ish type of thing. You know what was fun with that. So remember the orange and the green one that I showed? Yeah. So I didn't know what the green color was. It is actually Quince & Co. Oh, um, fun. I was going through. So here's a little tip for y'all. So this is our little Clockwork Cal logo. And um, you'll see both of our Clockworks in there. I thought it would be fun. And you'll see one uh, in progress today. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Okay. So- Okay. Take it away, Kevin. So something, um, especially if you are, if you record videos, like let's say you you do um, podcasts like we do and you record on your iPad, something I would recommend getting is an external hard drive. Really? So, yeah. Are you J- saying that out of experience? I am because our, oh, whew. I want to find, all right. Um, because our iPad fills up quite quickly with these videos especially right? that they're and because we do extended editions it takes up a lot of storage so i've been in the process of removing them all and moving them to a hard drive and freeing up storage so it does one of two things number one it keeps it safe for you so if like your account ever got hacked you have a backup of all your videos yeah the second thing is it frees up a ton of storage on your ipad or your iphone and you um you don't need one with a lot of internal storage because that's very expensive when you buy one of those. So 
and external hard drives are much cheaper. So I've done that and it's been beneficial. But what was fun is while I was doing that, I was going back and I was looking through all of my pictures and I found the picture of that clockwork and the yarn that I was using, which I'm trying to find now. Oh, here it is. So it was the orange is Shibui Knits. It's staccato in the jumpsuit colorway. And the green is Quince & Co. in their turn base, T-E-R-N, in the colorway kelp. Excellent. So you'll update that on Ravelry. I don't have a picture on Ravelry. Well, then I you don't can think. get one. Oh, Look maybe. at that. Yeah, maybe. Um, I wonder when <laughs> I made that. Let's see when these pictures were from. So I made that in 2018. Wow. That was probably one of your first major projects no it was i think my second my second or third shawl one of my first shawls was the groove by stephen west oh. if not the first um so yeah so those are our two make-alongs going on and i think that's all we really have for ad mini stuff yeah um and then over the last two weeks we had a flooded basement again so that's a great time it was flooded on Thursday and Friday last week. We got a ton. We of got rain. a well, yeah, we did. Thursday, Friday flooded. We got a break on Saturday, and then Sunday, our basement, the entire thing was pr under, I would say like an inch to an inch and a half no, of water. It was four to five inches of water. When I went down there on that morning, yeah, it was covering my <coughs> my uh, top of my foot because you. I started the pump before you woke up. Right. It was really bad. So we dealt with that a lot. So that um, took priority over everything else. And other than that, you finished your class. I did. My classes ended, um, which was nice. I get a week. I got a week off. So that felt like a wonderful like vacation. I f like the you know everything like at the end of a semester gets just very daunting and you know overwhelming. I had to finish with like a ten page paper, which just I couldn't focus on it. You know, you get so burned out. Anyway, I got a week off. It felt great. I start my next class tomorrow. And um, yeah, that'll go for another seven weeks. And I think I have like five more left after that nice. to take. So there's seven week courses, like I said before, I think. So hopefully I'm going to take some breaks because I don't want to burn myself out. I, I, I'm working on it, you know, and um, I'm not in a super rush to get it done. You know, it's not worth the, the added stress. You know what I mean? Picking up what I'm putting down? Yes. Great. And so, then uh, what else did we do? That's about it. That's it. Like, it's been a really... Um, Mellow. Mild. Yeah. The weather here has warmed started. up quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. We've been in the 50s and 60s. Even, I think, yesterday hit 71. Yeah. We've been so, comfortably taking walks again. Yes. Which, which has been really nice. Yeah. We loved doing that. And we... Not that we can't do it in the wintertime, but it's it just... just on, it feels just not the same. no it's no i'd rather be warm yeah watching with the fresh air and like the tv whole on the couch same um so <clears> that <throat> is that so we will now jump into some knitting i have great one fo and three whips and i have a lot of yarn you do have a lot of yarn yeah i have um two fo's and two, i'm gonna say three whips okay one of them was just a swatch but i'll talk about it because i want to talk about it all right i'm sorry my hair looks like a nightmare, yeah. but we're going to get our haircuts today. The timing is a little off. What? You make fun of me all the time, but it looks... Dis I look disheveled. You don't. I do. No. I'm disheveled. My standards are high, so I feel disheveled. Anyway, not that you care, but we usually try to get our haircuts before the podcast yes. when we just schedule it, but our hairdresser had to do some color or something like that on Sundays. Yeah, so ours is later on. That's why I'm wearing a hat today. Yeah. So... All right, why don't you start off since you have the most FOs. The most by two. I will talk about what I'm wearing, which um, I finished. This is the Men's Classic Raglan by Jesse Mate. No. No. Pardon. That's me. That's you. Um, it. Oh, you know, I was not... I had everything else set up except for um, the sweater. So this is the Men's Classic Raglan Pullover by Jane Richmond. The pattern's originally um, written for a solid color yarn. For those of you who have been following and, and you know that I saw a sample when we were at um, Vogue Knitting Live in New York 
from what's it called? From Loop Loop Studios. Yeah, let me get my uh, story straight. And I just loved it. I loved the <clears throat> I loved the idea of having like color blocking. Um, yeah, the sample that they had is what sold you. Yeah, the sample totally. was beautiful. I'll show you the card if I have it still. I do. And this is the sample. I really loved it. Um, and I've always wanted to work with this yarn before. So I tr tried my hand at doing the same thing. Um, I, I absolutely love the fit of this. It's very difficult to... Um, to maneuver back here but it's it's very much like a sweatshirty and i think it fits very well i feel very comfortable in it the sleeves are nice i ended up doing and i'll um i'll talk about the the yardage and stuff from the sweater but it's got a lot of positive ease which i really really like excuse my shorts and um the yarn is absolutely probably one of the best yarns that i've worked with it's extremely soft it was durable I didn't split the yarn at all when I was knitting with it. The pattern itself starts um, flat. You're knitting the short rows flat at the top of the neck, uh, which is nice. So it gives that the back of your neck a little bit more height. So it sits a little bit better uh, for me. <clears throat> and I um, ended up knitting the yoke in this first color, um, which is in the yin, yin yang uh colorway or uh base it's 100 percent extra fine merino and this colorway is called beyond which is really nice the second color here um is the same base and it is above so you've got above and beyond so these two uh coordinate very well together and then in they also have now solids so I, this is Yin Yang Solids in their worsted base, same, same exact base. And the colorway is what? Somebody keeps telling us how to pronounce it. Rubos? Where is it? Oh yeah, it's a T. I keep, I, and we actually, so it's funny. So it's a T and that comment comes up quite a bit. So I was going through some of our T's that we have downstairs yeah. and... One of them is that style of tea. That style? Flavor? No. Fla it's not flavor. It's the type of tea, like a green tea or black tea or whatever. It's uh, whatever. I can't think. We're of. having a really great day today. Understanding. I, You know, now that you're doing that, I'd be really interested to know what the, how many grams your sweater is. Yeah, and I'll weigh it. And somebody had left a comment that I probably should have or could have weighed the sweater itself as I was knitting it to kind of better understand um, how much yarn to use. Because the yardage on the back of the card, the, suggested, the suggestions, which I, th I think is really neat to have the, um, the pattern and then the yarn suggestions on the back of the card to kind of help you choose how many skeins of yarn to to pick up yeah absolutely my uh my results did not match the recommended yardage here i was ended up being short on the solid so i got another skein of that the uh the pattern recommends three skeins of each color on the size and i believe i did the 46 inch because i wanted that extra positive ease so for the 46 inch chest i needed a total of about 1606 yards which is three skeins of each color so um, we'll start here. I have, I bought three skeins of this. I have one full one left and I have a little nugget here. I have brought a scale up because a lot of people had asked um, that question and there's nine grams here. So I have 109 grams of yarn left over for that. This one, I have a lot more. So I, again, three skeins of this, I have one full one and this is 81 grams still left over. So I really only used about 120-ish grams um, of this yarn. So two skeins would have been plenty for that. And then for the solids, oh, this is the gutter people. I'm not picking up, obviously. We're right. in the middle of something. We need to get our gutters cleaned. Um, so that was fast. Great service. Ned Stevens. Highly recommend. 
don't know what his work quality is, but he gets back to you pretty quick. <clears throat> and it's a Saturday. Um, so again, three skeins. I ended up using uh, all three plus, and I have 75 left over. So I used about 325 yards of, or grams of the solid color. So just for your awareness, um, one other thing that I would have probably done a little bit differently, and there was a lot of suggestions. I like the color blocking of this. I like that the sleeves are solid, but I could have broken up the sleeves to match um, to match this a little bit more. You could have, you know what's actually, so looking at this and looking at this, yep, your color break is lower. Yes. So if you started this, yep. right, you would have used more of this. And can you, can I just see? And actually, in, in, yeah, I think if you move this color up mm -hmm. just to about here. So interesting that you Used a little that. more of this. Yeah. So the person who actually knit this sample, and I, I keep meaning to have it linked down below. The person who, um, who knit that sample reached out to me on Instagram. And they have a Ravelry page that broke down how they did it and the modifications that they made to the pattern, which was super helpful. Although I didn't find that until I already um, put in my second color. So for her, she did exactly what you said. So instead, I knit the entire yoke right to sleeve separation. And then at sleeve separation is when I added the next color. I felt like that made sense to me in my head. She actually started this color a uh, couple of rows before sleeve separation. So yeah. it would have brought that up a little bit, which I think might have, um, you know, would have brought this up. Um, but again, you know, it, it's a learning experience and it's still, I think it, it looks great. I, yeah, I have for no, sure. no regrets. Um, it's probably one of the most comfortable sweaters that I've ever knit before or I've ever worn, mm -hmm. uh, including store-bought sweaters. The yarn is just lovely. The fit is exactly what I was looking for. Um, just for that sheer like wearability of it you could just i have it on with shorts right now i'm feeling very comfortable um and it's something that would just be nice and casual for me to um to wear i don't have the body type that this gentleman does so um you know his pecs kind of show a little bit there um mine do not uh and i'm i'm great with that right because <laughs> right. my weight kind of fluctuates a yeah. little bit there and his shoulders look nice there too Nice good traps. Yeah, good traps. No, um, those aren't traps. No, the traps are here. Good shoulders. No, here. Yeah, his traps right there are showing. Yeah, I mean, everything's showing. Like, the, <laughs> you know, it's just we don't have the same body type. I think you can even see his abs through this stupid sweater. So anyway, um, <laughs> fine, great. Not what I was going for. I didn't want that fitted uh, style, though you certainly can do that if you are comfortable um, to do that. I just, the way that I did it, uh, I, I stuck exactly to the pattern. Uh, for that um, for that size sweater. It actually worked out well for my sleeve decreases because as I was decreasing, my last decrease was right where I needed my cuff to be. So I just knit um, an additional round uh, after my decreases and then started the uh, started the ribbing. I did a the pattern does call for uh, binding off in pattern, so you bind off in the two by two rib. I ended up doing a um, tubular bind off on that, and also on the uh, on the bottom of the sweater. I think it does look really nice. You know, mm -hmm. it does it does finish it really really nice. Yeah. So uh, again, I'm very very happy with the sweater. I the knitting of it was like I said lovely um because it's a non-superwash yarn it was easy to spit splice them together i use water instead of spit because i don't like that i don't know why it just gives me out but um you can felt the the ends together so that you don't have a million ends on the inside of the sweater and i just i laid it flat to i soaked it uh let it soak for a little while and then i just laid it flat to dry I didn't try to pin it out. I didn't even try to measure it out because I knew that the fit was good even before yeah. blocking. And I was very comfortable with any growth that might have happened just because I wanted it to be a little bit baggy. It. I don't think... I think it looks finished. I don't think it looks too baggy. I think it's just... No, I think it's, it's good. It's very it's, comfortable. It's like that... You know what it... I feel like it's a perfect... 
sweater for like the beach when you have shorts and a uh, and you want a sweatshirt mm. or you're hanging out on a Saturday night you're around a fire pit and you just want something oversized and cozy on yeah it, it's that kind of feel for it it's a yeah. really good um transitional piece it really too. is you know like it really is winter into spring summer into fall type of thing yeah. um i think you'll get a lot of wear out of me that. too um and this was knit on the recommended needle size so it's a five for the um for the ribbing and it is a uh, us7 for the the body of the sweater and i think that's all the modifications that i made just the bind off um i didn't decrease any of the sizing i loved the pattern because you kind of fill in the numbers so check out the pattern. We'll have that link down below uh, if that's something that you're interested in. You could do so many different things with this. It's a great basic sweater. You could stripe it. You can just do, you know, maybe just the yoke one one color block and everything else the same. Um, so highly uh, recommend the pattern and the yarn. Like I said, the yarn is just stunning. I've got a lot of skeins left over or a lot of yarn left over. I was thinking of doing the Boneyard Shawl by Stephen West using that yarn i think that could look kind of cool just because it's a nice simple triangular shawl knit with worsted weight yarn um so i think that that could look really neat too yeah you'll just have to figure out how to disperse the colors in that where yeah. it will look yeah nice i mean you could just I don't know go the yardage recommendations but you I, I could just go to whatever size i want yeah i mean you could trying. do the same thing that you did with this is go from mm -hmm. this to the go from the above to the beyond or beyond above and yeah. then Ru rubios yeah or just even stripe it or reverse the the order yeah so uh again highly um pleased with the completed project great job thank you so much um so my only fo and this is nearly finished nearly finished, finished. how can, how it, can be it be nearly, nearly finished? finished so i do need to Give it a good block and just weave in the ends. So Ray and I have decided that it's time to start knitting some samples with yarn that I've dyed. So this is the Changing Staircases Shawl by Tristan Molina of Dragon Horde Yarn. It is a free pattern. It uses one skein of fingering weight yarn. Um, I cast this on last week. I bound it off last night. You got through this really quick. It is knit on a US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter needle. And I was storing this in my French Supply Co. bag. Mm. And I have... By the way, we're just using a, re a regular kitchen scale. 25 grams of yarn left. This is knit out of... Iron Mountain, and this is on the 7525 I love base. This and it's here so pretty, Kat. Is the shawl. I love that this is a straight edge here, and this one has the little like points. Right. It's a it's a Harry Potter reference. The changing, oh yeah, the changing right? staircase. The changing staircase. Yeah. So that is a staircase. And it, um, I gave it a quick steam. Yeah. Um, today, but it does need to be blocked to open up the lace section just a little bit. Yeah. Wow, really pretty. And that's great. Just a nice little Yeah. Shawl. What a great size. That's beautiful. Yeah, I think it's nice. I'm yeah, I was happy eyes. with it. Out your eyes. Thank you. That's my hazel eyes that like to change with hazel eyes. Yeah, I think no, that's hungry eyes. I know, me. but I just I made it up. That's what I do. Yeah, I thought it was it's a really easy pattern yeah once you get so you cast on here do you guys hear skylar singing along to the music downstairs hopefully it's not distracting wait. to you no you cast on here yes so you cast on here and you just keep doing it it's two sections each section is um a 10 row repeat so once you get past the first set, the first two repeats, it's autopilot from there. You don't yeah. have to look at the pattern. It went very quickly. You never have more than 154 stitches on your needle. So it's not it's not really 
like a labor of love. It's super easy. You can just keep going. I thought about doing, I probably could have done one more repeat of each section at a little bit more length. Um, but I just wanted to follow the pattern. So I do think if you have that one skein and you're not sure what to do with that, this is a great it's so good. option. And it's a free pattern. Yeah. There's like, I want to say a ton of projects too. Let's check on the wrap. Ravelry, where are you? Um, and it was well written, you said? Yeah, it was well written. It was um, a little cheeky in there because it was like, oh, you finished this many repeats. Take a break. Have a drink. Oh, that's cute. Then keep going. Um, Did you take that advice? Yeah, I mean, I took breaks from it. Changing staircases. There are 17, almost 1,800 projects wow. on Ravelry. Look how it blocks out, like how... Yeah, again, there's the original. Yeah. I just think it's a really lovely pattern. It is, um, it's gorgeous. And that yarn is just stunning. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Like, I I don't Looks know... like there's a lot of movement. Like, the yarn itself, like, how you dyed it, seems like it has a lot of movement. Yeah, I'm and pretty nice. And the pattern like, has a lot not, of movement. There's not a ton. There's not, like, any real true color blocking. So, mm -mm. here, we'll hold it up. So it has a couple different blues and some grays and some white in it. I just think it, yeah, yeah I think it turned out really nice. Yeah. And that's Iron Mountain. Yeah, this is Iron Mountain. Do you I, have any of that in the shop currently? I should. That's why I grabbed it, I think. Okay. So yeah, nice lightweight Yeah. Um, shawl. And then once you block it, I mean, it's going to be even more stunning. Yeah, I'll do that this weekend, block it and weave in ends and then... We'll have to just start keeping a storage bin of samples. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. So that's that. You're up. Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. Okay. Um, my next one is... Dun, 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 dun. <gasps> Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> so this is another emotional support chicken that I started. Uh, I think I showed you my progress on the last... Uh, the last episode she's wonderful the colors are beautiful it's a very spring chicken it really is a springy chicken there is some sparkle in there in this colorway um but i don't know if you can necessarily see it oh no it's in this yeah it's in these colors yeah um you probably it's, can't see it the lighting here it's very bright outside so it's not really kind of well it's also a uh, purple it's a darker purple oh um sparkle yeah she's just great the um the pattern is the emotional support support chicken we got this as a kit from um uh the knitting tree la thank you very much for sending this kit our way and it's been really great this is obviously taken the knitting verse by storm uh so many people are doing emo emotional support chickens um, and to see all the different types of yarn that everybody is using and the sizes and sizes of the chickens and the different eyes that everybody is choosing, even if you don't get a kit, it's been really fun watching people put together their own things. It's so yeah. really cool because it's in the top 10 which is so favorites. Crazy. Like for a while it was number one. So it's really fun to see, um, see them when we're scrolling through YouTube yeah. and seeing them on other podcasts like um, Taylor from oh, yeah. Wool needles hands, hands yeah knit one and then i as i'm scrolling through i've seen so many podcasts um working on this it's such a fun knit it is and you can't help but squish it so what i ended up doing um was what i was just thinking so we we've been talking about it quite a bit on our thursday night knit night and our friend jeff like when he went to go buy the pattern there was under a hundred projects on ravelry there currently is 1350. Wow. Yeah. The chicken it has arrived. The uh, Just so everybody's aware, for me, um, I do knit a little bit looser on the looser side, but I did use the recommended needles that uh, the pattern recommends. I did, you have an option here to um, remember how this is knit flat and then you you're seam this up. So you have an option here to either do like a mattress stitch or something like that, or do a crochet 
uh, to attach it by a crochet by crochet, and I did the crochet option. I think it looks actually really nice. It looks nice and clean. And then on my first one, I did a three needle bind off. I left yeah. my stitches live, and then I did that. What I think I'm gonna, excuse me, what I think I'm gonna do on the next one is on my last row on each of the tail feather sections, I'm gonna knit it in whatever this color is oh, in my cool. kit and then do the three needle bind off so it'll be a little more prominent nice i like that um i did run out of the main color of yarn so what i did was i took and i don't know where oh it's right there actually um so what i ended up doing was the contrast color i knit uh i took my leftover main color of yarn um weighed it and then just kind of split that so i knit half of it and then i knit the the middle piece um, in the contrast color, and then I knit the the rest of that. So the way that this is constructed is that you construct the entire body. It's flat, back and forth, back and forth. You do some really um, creative decreases and everything to shape the head, and then when you add in the beak, it pulls it all together. And then you knit this bottom piece separately, this diamond shape, and then you seam it all together. You you knit the comb and the waddle separately, and that's it. My least favorite part is seaming it together, just because um, I'm not a, a really great seamster. But I'm happy with what, how I did it. You can see like, and even in the pattern, like the increases and in things, like it creates the chicken breasts. Yeah, it's like right in very here. clever. Very clever. It's it's very cute, super squishy. And I couldn't be happier with this one. I definitely want to do more. I think we should do some for the kids. That's what we talked about. Yeah. I was actually thinking about that last night is we have a ton of nitpicks, wool of the Andes worsted. Yeah. So we just pull it out and start making random yep. combos. Oh, and one other thing. Before I put in the eyes and started seaming it together, I ended up blocking, not blocking, I soaked the, the wash yarn, it. wash the yarn before um, and let it dry before I seamed it up. Because <clears throat> once it's done, I mean, yes, you could probably throw this like I was just going to soak it that. because it's got the polyfill inside. But I I feel like it would take a long time to dry and it might it might ruin the inside. Does polyfill um, like rebound when it's washed? I don't know that. If you know that answer, definitely uh, leave that down below, please. Yeah, I wonder if it wow. goes back to shape because, like, mine, the one that I knit, in, cute. it's getting a little disfigured. So I wonder yeah. if, like, washing it, if that would... Fluff it back up again? Yeah. I don't know. Good or question. how can you fluff it up? Yeah. If you know, please please, please yeah. let us know. Yeah. How huh. do you care for your emotional support chicken? Or they, any of your, like... care for you. Or your amigurumis that you've stuffed. Like, do, do they... Do you wash them and does it go back into shape if they're just figured now? I don't think I've ever washed amigurumi. Just wonder. Yeah. All okay. right. So, so that's my uh, that's my FO. And that is all of our FOs. That's all of so our FOs. We will move on to whips. How many do you have? Um, I have three that I want to talk about. Me too. Okay. Um. Do you want to start? All right. I'll start. So okay. this is my jelly roll blanket. Mm by Kay Jones. So this is living in my bag by our friend Jay, who is Threads Company. These bags are so good. So huge bag. I have a crap ton of minis in here and um, and the blanket. So I am knitting this on a 2.75 millimeter. 2.75 millimeter needle. I'm using double pointed needles. I am on now on my third strip. So. It's so cool. All right, so this is the front. I have a lot of ends. I've been going through and starting to weave some of them in. Smart. So let's start from the bottom. So here we go. Last time you guys saw it, I was actually right in here. So I finished strip two. Um, I know some of these yarns, like this is either Dragon Horde or Yarn Cafe. Mm -hmm. I think I'm using 
yarns from your Brioche Adventure wrap. That was a fun project. From that kit. So we have some Le Garçon, some Knit Picks, Trilogy, nope, Lolo. Oh, really? Needles at the Ready, Amanda Knits, Lolo, Trilogy. And that's Lolo Bean. Lolo did it. Lolo did it. I think one of these is Trilogy. I'm not sure which one. Um, this is this is Trilogy. This is the leftover from my Musselboro. And yeah, so I finished the rest of Stripe 2. And I'm maybe about a quarter of the way through Stripe 3. So really relaxing knit. A lot of people do this in DK by holding their fingering weight double. So that's another good way to make mm -hmm. a nice cushy and cozy blanket. I believe I figured out I need three, six, nine, 12 to 18 strips to get it to be the width that I want. Um, and I'm using the, the pickup method to attach the strips. I use your recommendations and I went to K from the Crazy Sock Ladies project page and just using her method of picking yeah. them up for that. And then this is my, I have all of these yeah. minis in here that I'm going through. If, if I'm tired of one of them, then I just break the yarn and I start working on another. But I am trying to use up any minis that I pick. So awesome. one color may be like repeated here and there throughout the, the project. It's really cute. I, I really um, am kind of jealous of that you uh, have like that project going on. Well, feel free to start no, I don't. I, I don't want to yet, but it's nice to have like a large project to kind of work through. I do think it would be fun <clears throat> to either do that or something that I'll show later, like one a year for one of the kids. That's really nice. Wow. Even really if nice. it's like a lap size one, it doesn't have to be a, yeah. you know, six by four or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but just this uh, one for the kids, I think that would be cute. And then again, it's a great way to get rid of your leftover yarns because oh, yeah. i never know it's nice to have them especially if you're like oh i need something for my heels and toes or my cuffs or whatever the case is it's nice to have some leftovers but with two knitters in the house the amount of leftovers that we have is ridiculous and we just need to start working through them yeah i agree um okay my next one you know what let's talk about this really quickly because it's not any uh real progress um but i am going to start a new sweater and <clears throat> to kevin's point we decided to start um using his yarn to knit some samples so my knitting our knitting i think is going to really be uh my rule going forward ha 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 we'll see what happens is that I will, oh, I will try to have a sweater on the needles and using yarn like that I purchased in a sweater's quantity for a sweater, and then have uh, some samples going. So I'm gonna try to take a little bit of a break from like buying and yarn for other projects. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. So anyway, um, in saying that. I started, I purchased this, we purchased yarn for um, new sweaters this year at Rhinebeck. <clears throat> uh, let me see if I can find it. Here it is. So um, this is Bare Naked Wools. Uh, we purchased some yarn from Bare Naked Wools <clears throat> by Knit Spot. And I wanted to do a fingering weight cardigan. So I thought that that would be really nice and, and cozy. So chose the pattern Wild Horses, which is super nice. And it gives you the option to either do a cardigan or a pullover. I love that so much about their patterns. We've yep. talked about that before. I knit his home office and that had, excuse me, three options in the pattern. So you are really getting a lot of information. Yeah for really um it's not much maybe like six or seven bucks and mm -hmm. you're getting three patterns yeah 
Oh, I agree. I think um, I, I, I think her patterns are very easy to follow. Um, and their yarn is, is just stunning. Yeah. Like, I, I love the quality of their yarn. It is a little on the pricier side, mm-hmm. but it's definitely worth definitely worth the money it, the quality of the yarn is just so nice and it's all natural so like you know she recommends even uh when you block it you can use hot hot water um it's not going to bleed there's no dyes in it um and it's just it's incredible the blends that that they come up with you're going to make a, a garment that's going to last yeah it's going to outlast you yeah. pretty much like yeah. if you take care of it yeah it, it's going to last forever yeah. I fully agree. And so um, th- there's for this pattern, there's a lot of different suggested yarns. So I chose one that I thought would be a really neat base to try that would help add to the drapiness of what I'm going for with this cardigan. I really don't want a form-fitted cardigan. I want something to throw on, again, like around the fire pit or you know with shorts, but even as an accent piece or you know whatever. <clears throat> so um, this is Bare Naked Wool's Better Breakfast fingering. I I also wanted a um, like creamy color, white kind of whitish color. Um, so I was envisioning maybe putting some like brown elbow pads, like a sa- uh, saddle color. Yep. Elbow pads and using nice like leather buttons or something like that. I thought that would look really chic. <clears throat> um, so this is Better Breakfast blend. In their fingering weight, it's 55% merino, 35% dehaired alpaca, and 10% nylon. So the nylon will give it some structure and some strength because the alpaca can stretch a little bit and not keep its shape. So with the merino and the nylon, I think that'll add to uh, add to that. But it is it is honestly the softest yarn, um, and you can still feel that there's there is some substance to it. There's a little like undercurrent of it's not coarse. No, it's but not it's coarse. Sturdy. It's yes, maybe that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. It feels sturdy. It doesn't feel so delicate that it's gonna like rip apart in your fingers. Um, I bought a sweaters quantity. We bought a yeah. I bought a sweaters quantity of this. I had this packed away um, in my bag. You, what I do when I have a planned project is I find a um, a project bag. I put the the yarn in it. This is from Portland Leather. I love these. It's bags. a great bag. It's a great great bag. And then I put a note in it. Um, of what I want the project to be. So this is Wild Horses by Anne Hansen. And when I kept saying she, Anne Hansen is the designer and the owner of um, Knit Spot Bare Naked, Bare Naked Wools. She's lovely as well. She's such a prolific knitter. She knows so much about the different breeds. And that's what I really love about Bare Naked Wools too is because she can explain the different types of sheeps, why they chose these blends, where they come from, the history of things. It's are, it's really neat. Are you going to do that knit along this year that you did last year with the I hat? probably will because that was really that was really cool. And yeah. I never would have done that on my own. Um, so anyway, I um, I did a gauge swatch to try to figure out what size I want to do. And I actually got gauge on this. I think I was shy by half a stitch. I ended up, the gauge on this is 24 stitches in 36 rows. I got 24 and a half stitches by 35 rows. So I'm pretty much there. And and the row count, I really don't bo- like bother with most of the time on sweaters, right? You, you measure it by length. And you didn't block it aggressively. So you I could, if you, I if probably you pinned it, you could have gotten 24 stitches. Yep, I agree. So um, the sizing on this sweater though, one of the things that I struggle with is my my chest size like I, I think I've said this before, can be anywhere from like 40 to 42 inches, right? It, it definitely will fluctuate. And um, the pattern recommends a, I think it's like three to five inches of positive ease. I thought it was up to set four to six. Okay, hold on. Yeah, you're right. Four to six inches of positive ease. So the sizing goes, it, it, it's very, um, it goes from 36 to a 68 inch chest. The... For me, it will go 40 and then 44 and then 48, right? So it's hard for me to figure out what size I want to do. Because like if I do a 42 and my chest that week is a 40, that's great, right? But if my chest that week is a 42, my positive ease will only be two inches. So what I would do is measure this sweater that you uh, have on now. Idea. See what your chest measurements are now yeah. there and then... 
get as close to that as possible. Yeah. Because right now I'm leaning towards getting a or knitting the 48 inch because that but that could potentially get me up to like almost eight inches of positive ease. Yeah, I feel like that could be yeah too much. But again, I could also I'm just I'm not a super confident garment knitter right now where I'm comfortable, you know, looking at something and adjusting it on the fly. Like I really still need to follow the pattern. Right. So I would do two things. I would measure that and I would measure your so basic. Yeah, Those are your great. two Yeah. Now your two favorite fitting sweaters. Yeah. You could also get your <laughs> ranger cardigan and measure that measure oh, the I might back do the ranger of, cardigan measure the back of it because it is a cardigan so you'll get a more accurate measurement if you measure back under the underarms and look at those three determine which one of those three sweaters you want it to fit like and then choose that chest size okay circumference great so um anyway once i determine what size it's either going to be the 44 <coughs> or the 48 inch um, chest. So that's the third or the fourth size. And I knit a swatch. Did I show this yet? No. And I think the fabric is beautiful. It's drapey, but it's still solid enough, right? Like you can't, I can't see through it right now. Yeah. Um, which is, is really nice. And it just feels, it just feels so like delicate, but strong, <coughs> if that makes sense. I'm really, I'm really happy with how it, how the yarn bloomed. Um, I did soak this in hot water, like she recommends, and I just, I really just laid it flat. I didn't pin it or anything. So to Kevin's point, I probably could have gotten, I probably could get more or closer to the yeah. the fabric, the gauge that I'm looking for. So I'm excited to start with the, you know, on this, this is going to be knit on a, I believe it's a... Yeah, a uh, US 5 for the body and a US 3 for the ribbed hems and neck trim. So I will stick with, because I, I like the fabric, I will stick to those recommended needles and just try to find the um, the size that works for me. And I will err on the side of larger than smaller. Nice. Yeah. So that's it. So that's Wild Horses by Ann Hansen. Okay. So my next project, you guys have seen it. I've been, I feel like I've been knitting on this a lot longer than I've wanted to, but I made some progress on my cozy classic raglan by Jesse made design. I am, you know what? I wonder is my Apple pencil in here? No. Um, I'm knitting it out of Mayak. Tibetan Cloud and the colorway Flame. It's a very like salmon-y color. So last time I showed it, I just finished the body and now I'm working on the sleeves. Um, let's see, so here we are. So I made, I finished all my decreases. The decreases on this do happen quite quick. I know I mentioned this last time. I thought because I had more stitches, the decreases would make my sleeve a little bit longer. Yeah. but since this is what I was it feels so do. nice it is wow oh I guess I'm it maybe it's longer than I thought I'm at 15 inches yeah so I think I might actually be ready to start my ribbing because mm -hmm. that would get me 18 inches I need three inches of ribbing yeah so mine my sleeves I think this is 20. 22 to 23 inches. Oh, gee, maybe then I'm not yeah. near there. I don't have as long. My arms aren't as long as yours, but I think I need a little more length. And I feel like that happened on the other sweater, the first one that I knit. So something I will say about this, I was talking about this yesterday with someone, is my this armhole is super exaggerated. What I would do if I were to knit this in the future is I would knit one row before separating for sleeves. The... Raglan increases on this, you are picking up, you are doing a left and a right lifted increase. So I feel like it exaggerates that. Yeah, that bar. Yeah. Or whatever. So. Much more on this. Um, much more than a, a regular, I don't know, a regular 
raglan increase the ones that i've done in the past yeah i noticed it on the other version of this sweater as well that my stitches are very stretched out under my underarms and i did some i followed a video to try to avoid that and it helped a little but i i would definitely recommend doing at least a row or two rows of just straight knitting before you separate for sleeves i think it was smart because then you have more uh, more solid um base yeah. to to do your increase like i i should be able to go through and oh yeah you'll be able to pick that up and close it for tighten sure. it up yeah. some but yeah so yeah i just need to knit some more on the sleeve and then do i this. like the rate of decreases though like it it looks it looks um, it's really fast like yeah but it looks nice like it here, looks like that's how an arm would you know like would really look it is and this one that's a lot um, of decreases. It's a ton of decreases. And I did it properly this time. The last time I think I did it too quickly, like one row okay. early. This one I followed it exactly and I did my decrease on every fourth round. Can we talk about um, your the stitch marker color? I don't know if you all are like this. And if you are, please comment below. It's just funny because how different we are. At oh, I've knit a so this was my last decrease. So I've already knit. What oh, would you yeah. say, like two inches? Two inches about. So I need to keep going. So they do happen very fast. And she does say in the pattern that it's meant to be looser in your upper arm uh -huh. and tighter here. Guys, are you like me? And do your stitch markers need to be the same color on at least one sleeve? Like my other sleeve, I will probably do all green. But <laughs> I need to chosen the color. Those are, it's really interesting. We have a bunch of um, different colored stitch markers. The light bulb stitch markers. I think we got from Amazon actually. Yeah. You get like a thousand for yeah. a penny. Not um, really, but pretty close. Yeah. So, and then we split them up. Like he got six colors. I got six colors, whatever. I always go for my green and the orange the most, I think because they're easy to see with most yarns. This one probably wasn't the best because that you can tell. Can we fix this one. This is annoying me a little. Bit. Yeah, you can tell actually how orange this color is. How there's some orange in it because the orange stitch markers are blending in quite a bit. Um, so for this, I am knitting the size five, which is an extra large. It is supposed to give me. Um, it's supposed to be for a fifty inch chest it does not feel like 50 have inch you chest. measured your gauge again since you've knit it it might be interesting for you to try to measure gauge no because it's not blocked i know but it'll like, give you still a good idea how off you might be right because i mean again my gauge swatch is tiny yeah but <laughs> barely it's barely a size of a sponge <laughs> it's not even a size of a sponge yeah it might be interesting though i mean it's a little late now but to see where your gauge is at. Yeah, so... And I knit this on a US 2.5, which is a 3 millimeter needle. Yeah. A US 3, which is a 3.25 millimeter needle. And a US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter needle. I bought five skeins of this, and I'm just about to finish skein three. Really? Yeah. With my... What was it with my other one from the Sonder Yarn Co? I only used three and a half skeins. I have a full skein and a half left over. So, wow. yeah. So, I mean, and that's two different sizes. I knit the 46 in the Sonder Yarn Co. And this is going to be the 50 inch chest. And the reason I went to 50 is my gauge is tighter than what the pattern called for. So instead okay. of going up a needle size, I went up a sweater size. Smart. And I think that's all I have to say about that. Nice. That will now be my, that's going to be my main focus, I believe. Cause I'm so yeah, close. You're close. I'm so close to finishing yeah. that. Yeah. And that's nice. It's right. You know, you'll have a sweater finish before summertime. Right. Cause it's hard to, I mean, I, I don't know. It's a little harder to knit bigger bulkier items i think during the summertime maybe. i don't think so because we have air conditioning on mm. okay it's cold with the air conditioning we we still like it if is. we're hanging out on the couch we have a blanket on yeah it's true 
during the summertime because good it's point. so freaking cold in the house. Yeah, good point. Um, okay, me next. My next project is one of our samples. I This was going to be part one of the yarns used in the clockwork, but uh, it was a little bit too close that's right to the second color so um i was like what can i just what can i do with this single skein of yarn and i've always wanted to knit this because everybody's knit this before and i thought it would just be a nice quick um quick knit to show off the yarn and so this is the sophie scarf by petite knit i'm sure everybody has is aware of this there's two sizes in the pattern and it's meant for it's written for dk weight yarn so I have fingering weight yarn. I did look on Ravelry to see a lot of people did use fingering weight yarn uh, for this. There's really no reason why you couldn't. Mm -hmm. I was just curious to see if uh, people had needed to or opted to change the needle size, the recommended needle size, which is a US 3. No, it's a 3.5 millimeter needle. US 4. US 4. So I wanted to see if anybody, you know, had changed that. And, and most people that I looked at kept the needle size the same. So um, what, I didn't change anything at all on the pattern. The only thing that I am going to change is the length of it. I'm trying to, I wanna try to use as much of the yarn as possible um, to kind of create like a, a longer scarf, like a really long scarf. And this is why I probably don't knit, I've never knit a scarf before, which is kind of weird. It's just, it's a lot of back and forth, right? It is, it's, I mean, it's but... A lot. But it's no different really than a shawl. I know, but it feels so different. So, but this has been this has been really nice to knit. The yarn is is lovely. Let me show you my progress so far. Um so the just um for awareness and kind of what I was looking at just to give me an idea of how long I want to make the scarf, you know, or how many times the recommended pattern. The small is approximately um 31 and a half inches or about 80 centimeters long, and the large is 102 centimeters long, approximately 40.25 inches. So I think I'm just gonna keep knitting this until I get tired of the increases and then just start the decreases. I knit quite a bit of it, or I felt like I knit quite a bit of it. This is, uh, the yarn is Needles at the Ready. It is Dreamcatcher. It's a very beautiful, like delicate, um, colorway i feel it's very bright it's fun it's like springy almost it makes me feel like it makes me feel say it's white with gray and some speckles of like golds and browns yeah it makes me feel happy so here's what i have um here's what i have so far you start at the bottom and you do increases a certain amount of rows until you get to a set stitch count um, but I'm, I've gone past that stitch count. Obviously, like I said, this is meant for DK and I'm about 22 inches long. So even if I start my decreases now, it's still going to be longer than the recommended large length. So I'm thinking of either doing 60 inches, um, or just, you know, going because I'm, I weighed the yarn and there's, there's still like 85 grams left. <laughs> so this only used about, let me just make sure. So the, the yardage or the uh, the grams on this to start with was 107. So I have 87 left over. So I used 30 grams? 20. 20 grams. 20 grams of yarn. And I got all of this already. So if I were to try to use 50 grams of yarn, you know, on the increases and then 50 on the decreases. It would and how long be a is it bit. already? This is already 22 inches long. So see, the oh, finish is 40. So yeah. if I were to start my decreases, it would be 44, right? And then you would have only used 40 grams. So that's actually really good to know. If you decided to do a fingering weight version, mm -hmm. you could make the large with two 20 gram minis. Oh, yeah. And stripe it if you wanted to. Yeah. You know, you could have, good idea. or you could do like, do a 20 gram mini and get to your final increase and then decrease with another 20 gram mini and yeah. do a real color blocky version. Um, and then, so let me just show you this up close because I think this is really pretty. It just looks so clean and like muted and nice. It, that could, would be a nice one of these Lyle caps. It would, very, very much so. Um, so a lot of questions come up with this as I think one of the, the barriers that some people have is that they have difficulty keeping track of where their decreases 
or increases happen. Um, it's every set number of rows. So you can, it's so easy to get into a flow of this. Um, the I chord edge is just your slip stitches or it's just a knit in I chord. Um, so I mark uh, my increase row. So I just increased, I don't know if you can see it there. I just in, did an increase row and I know that my increase row happens on an even row. Um, so I mark that there and then um, I knit, you, you can see the garter bumps in there, which is easy for me to keep track and I can count up from, from the stitch marker that row. I know it sounds really simple, but um, it, you know, as you're going, it could get a little bit confusing at times when you're just like in the flow and like, oh crap, how many did I just do? So it's easy just to count the, the, the garter rows here in order to kind of figure it out. And I know that my stitch marker will be on an even row, which is a decrease row. And um, I can kind of count from there if I get lost. Hope that makes sense. Uh, like I said, I'm using the US4 recommended needles 3.5. Um, everything else is exactly the same. I'm just changing the length of it. But I love it. I think it showcases the yarn really, really well. Yeah, it's um, nice. Yeah. And so that's really, you know, really easy. And like this small version, that little neckerchief thing, that would be done super quickly, especially on DK weight yarn. And I know yeah. a lot of people say this, but make a great, you know, gift and all of that. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. So my last whip is a new cast on and it's living in a tanny Casey bag that we got last year at Maryland Sheep and Wool. Yeah. Love it. Um, I, I cast this on because our friends Justine and Lori are both making one. Justine had finished hers. And, um, oh, jeez. There's a lot going on in here, y'all. All right, let's do this first. And you're also in the middle of a row. I know. All right, so. All right, here we go. All right, so I am knitting... The Cozy Comfort Throw by A Homespun House. This is a beautiful garter stitch blanket. Um, I have made some changes, I guess, from the pattern. So I am holding finger, I'm holding fingering weight double. So what I did is I went through all of the minis that we have and I put them together in six color families. So I have like a gray color family, a beigey peach one, a yellow, a red, a blue, a green. And I think that's it. I don't know if that was six colors. But, and I have five skeins of each family and fading mm -hmm. in that. Um, fading in that color family so and i'm holding it with a bare yarn just a regular 75 25 um fingering weight merino nylon and i am using a us7 which is a 4.5 millimeter and what i did is i did an i cord roughly about 220 stitches i may have either been over by a couple or under by a couple and then picked up all the stitches and just started chugging along. I'm through one skein already. I'm on my second one. So I'm holding it with this and it just makes a nice like squishy fabric. You can see here, I feel like I should have started with this one, but it, um, in the mini form, it looked darker than this one. Mm -hmm. So whatevs. No, it's it's gonna be gorgeous. Justine did one. Hers hers really did fade. Yeah. Um I think yours will too as you get as you go more. No, like hers is like an actual fade. Oh. Oh because I see with she, all the colors. She knit hers from an advent that I believe was a fade. Mm -hmm. If somebody out there has an advent that's a fade this year, I may buy it just to do another one of these. Cause this is mindless, y'all. Once you do the I cord, um you don't have to think about it. You just keep on going. And the main difference is that the regular pattern has you just cast on a knit and then you go back and you pick up all around the blanket and do an I cord. 
I don't have that type of negativity in my life or time for that. So that's why I did the I chord. Um, I follow Justine and Lori's recommendation. And then I'm doing the I chord on the edges too. So I'm just slipping yeah, my three smart. stitches, doing the I chord. Uh, but, and I went, the pattern calls for a US 8 and I'm doing a US 7 because I am a looser knitter anyways. So I wanted it to be a little more, a little tighter and a little, I didn't want it to be too loose. Yeah. I want it to be um, cushiony, but just it, like it it's looks, gonna be. It already looks super cushy. Oh, it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be so beautiful. It's like thick too. Yeah. Thick and squishy. It's gonna be like a weighted blanket. Yeah. That's so nice. I'm excited for this. It's just something, and this was all of, you know, a couple, I cast this on on Wednesday, I think. I did the I chord pretty quickly, to you be did. honest. Um, I came home from work, I think, and you were just finishing it up. I don't know when you started it. But. Yeah. So definitely check that pattern out. I yeah. think it will be... Oh. Yeah, show your colors. Yeah. Sorry. Um, all right. So here are my colors. I just use... So this has got to be the color. So here goes the next in my, like, beigey color family. Right? One, two, three. Yeah. Can you hold anything up? And then... Actually, I feel like I'm missing a colorway because it goes this one and this one. That's only four. And then Maybe I don't you know. Took it down. Maybe you have it but down. here we go. Here's all the colors I'm going to be using. It's going to be so cool. I can't wait to see this section. The here? red? Yeah. I know. I think this is going to be a fun Yeah, bit. me too. They're all great. Yeah, and it's a combo of, like, look, we have... Lollipop, Lollipop yarn. I have some trilogy. I have some Lolo did it. I think I even have a skein. Maybe not. Um, there's some whatnot in here. A ton. I just went through. We have a huge bag full of all these minis. Yes. And I just started. I took them all out and tried to come up with a nice color palette for it so i think that this is going to be really fun and you know one of those go-to's when you don't know what you want to work on just pick up some garter and go yeah and i meant to say um the dream catcher yarn i don't know if i said it it's on our 75 25 achilles sock base so that's 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon it's about 462 yards per 100 grams which is the same base as my next project okay you're up okay um, so this is part of our, this is my contribution to our knit along. This is the clockwork by Stephen West. Here is the pattern. Um, for those of you who do not know, and like Kevin said earlier, there is a brioche version. I'm not sure if it's a two color brioche or a single brioche. I would I'll assume check. that it's two color. I'll check. Cause I was wondering that myself. Yeah. So, uh, it's basically, uh, garter stripes. Um, with some slip stitch, uh, like a slip stitch, uh, you know, border in there. Super simple. There are a lot of stitches on the needle, but it's, um, it's really an easy, like four row repeat, basically back and forth, back and forth. So the colors that I chose, um, after the dream catcher did not work, we wanted to pair the dream catcher with this yarn. This is, um... Oh shoot. This is steampunk, which is absolutely gorgeous. I love that. But the dream catcher, uh, we got kind of lost in there. So moved on, then combined it with graham cracker, which is really nice. So it's great to have a solid uh, and a variegated for this. We still wanted it to be a little bit of a lower contrast, but still kind of showcase the yarns. Um, I believe based on looking at the images, it looks like it's three colors. It's a very, it's actually quite different from. It is very different. Do you want to show it real quick? Yeah, let me. Um, I'm just gonna go back to the original image. The shape. Yeah, it's quite different. Yeah, I'm wondering actually. why it would be still called clockwork. It looks cool though. Yeah, I I thought about doing that, and I have two colors picked out um, but a third I don't, might be actually kind of i nice. don't know now yeah um so this is knit on uh us5 
And again, I think I said Steampunk and Graham Cracker and 75% Superwash Marrow, 25% Nylon base. Here. Well, Steam, Graham Cracker shouldn't be. Graham Cracker, isn't this on 100% Superwash? No. no. Interesting. I don't typically... They're both the same. Huh. So this is... Oh, that's right. That was a really, really old batch, the Graham Cracker. Are you do, did you do your graham cracker on a different? Yeah, I did it on 100 super wash. Oh, right nice. Now. Okay, that'll be nice. So this is graham cracker. The one this is an older, older label too, so it's an older colorway, 7525. And then this is Dreamcatcher on our new uh, label. Yeah, and Oops. here's graham cracker on. Oh no, that's Dreamcatcher. Pardon, pardon me. 100 super wash. Yeah. Are they? Oh, and you can see. So this is a re this will be a good um, example too. Well, this is still a little. I'll day. show the project in just a sec. No, go ahead. Oh, um, okay. And this is what we have so far. Can you hold that? So um, again, we're going for a lower contrast version, but I think it's so cool because you can certainly see the difference. Yeah. Right. And I just got through section one, started section two, which I'm happy that I was able to do that so we can really show uh really show it so you can certainly see the um the blockiness there you can pick up on the stripes but it's not super um contrasty like in your face right it reminds me of s'mores right now it kind of does it's right graham cracker in this colorway could have yeah like yeah it reminds me of s'mores even though there's no brown in mm -hmm. that colorway i don't think so um this shawl like we wore we showed before it's so easy to wear um and it just i think the colors go so well together yeah and you really can see it in person it's even uh it's even brighter it yeah, looks so fun. cool up close so i'm really excited about um i'm really excited about it and like i said you know it the rows do take some time it's almost about like 10 to 15 minutes per row um maybe not not that much but it still takes it still takes some time so it's interesting. You can see it's the same color, but how colors can vary on this two is different definitely brighter like bases. Yeah. Well, this is still damp too, so this oh. will, um, which impacts the way that it looks. But mm. same dye recipe, but two different bases. So that's it. Clockwork. I mean, he calls it a scarf, which totally is. But yeah, it it is but more scarf-like cool. than shawl-like. Yeah. I'm really, um, I'm really super excited. I have my have colors over finished. there. So this is going to be another sample. Um, so if we're out and about and you see us at a trunk show, you can try this on. I'm gonna, ha I'm doing mine out of its fall, y'all. That's gonna be so nice. And roasted pumpkin. Yeah. And then I have both of those projects uh, in the same bag by Jay uh, Threads Company. We have that link down below. There's so much room in here. And I love that, that there's like a pocket on I'm the side. Oh, I'm going to have to sneeze. Okay. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> Get yourself all worked up. Well, I knew it was coming. I think that's it. That's weird. Okay. Well, you prepared the world. It's all good. All right. So, so that is the Clockwork by Stephen West. I think that's all of our knitted objects. So if you are joining the Clockwork Cal, please post on Instagram and on Ravelry so we can see your progress and what yarns you've chosen. And again, you can go for a very high contrast or a low contrast. Um, the world is your oyster and we would love to see your inspiration there. All right. So up next... Um, quick question. I'm sorry. Did you mention the, are all of these yarns available? Those two... The Graham Cracker, I just... Yep. died so it's drying so that's not up and i believe steam uh steampunk is still there if not so we're gonna lead into yep. the Perfect. website needles at the ready yarn what's really been fun or what's works really well is if there is a colorway on the site that's repeatable that doesn't say single brew um and it's not available if you reach out to me just let me know what colorway you're looking for the colorway, the base, and how many skeins, and I can add it to my dye schedule. Because that's actually been happening quite a bit, and it helps me come up mm -hmm. with a schedule of what I want to dye. So I do appreciate that. So yeah. thank you. And reach out via email. There's a link to our email right from the website. Yes. Um, so now we're going to talk about some stuff that I have been dyeing this week. And not 
I don't think any of this is on the website yet because I'm still waiting to like dry and skein, but just to give you a peek on what I've worked on this week. So this is all tonals, all on the 100% superwash merino four ply. So first up again is graham cracker. It's really pretty. Next up it's so is so soft. Ghost water. This is definitely a favorite. This one. Has I know it's got an... some undertones of green in yeah, there. Yeah, it's like a light blue green. But it's for me, I I see it more of like a icy, um, like an icy greenish blue. Right. Yeah. Um, this one is probably going to be called. I forgot what Jeff said. It's either like Cabernet Spill or Cal Cabernet Stain. Something like that. This is a really beautiful purple. It was an accident. Um, I measured out the wrong color. And then I just added a second color to it and to see what would happen. And this yeah. is what came out. I think Cabernet is usually darker okay. than that. So that's, that's very purple. It's very light purple. Yeah, it's also it, pretty wet. So Yeah, this just came yet. out of the... Yeah. I think I just... Yeah, I dyed this one yesterday. Um, this is... This one's Winter Steel. This one I love. It's a very light yeah. blue gray. Like, I think these go so well together. Well, they're, but they're I both really, really, really light. I know, but look how nice, huh? How nice. How um, nice. Let's see. This one does, I don't think this one has a name. I thought it was a different recipe. Ooh. Um, and I don't have any browns. So I'll come up with something for this. I don't know the name of this yet. I have to see if I actually. It's like Deep Forest. I, this was a one of a kind when I did test the color. It had to be because I think I only dyed two skeins originally. So I need mm. to come up with the color for this brown color waiting. Uh, let's see what else. Okay. This is Wild Orchid. This is a really is bright gorgeous. pink. And it's coming off ex pretty much exactly how so, it is. So I wish I saved it. Somebody had knit... It's in our Instagram. It might be in our messages. Somebody knit a at dawn, I'm pretty sure, by Hohe with this and spring is in the air. Oh, I didn't bring it in. Crud. All right. I don't Because I thought it was something look. else. Um, this is actually on the BFL and nylon. Uh, and this is a good example. Somebody had requested it on this base. This is um, Charhu, Chartreuse. Chartreuse. Then we have... <sighs> Ballet Slipper. Uh, this one's really A nice. really pale pink. pink. You know then... what I love about these yarns is like they look... There's like a halo of color almost. Like when you're looking at it straight on versus like when you're looking at the sides, like it, I the love, hue almost changes a little bit depending on on the angle of view that you. I have. think some I think of it's, it's really the pretty. base too. Yeah. I think the base is beautiful. It's really um, nice. This one is spice. This one I showed this last time, but I actually because um, I was testing it for a friend and I dyed up more. Yeah. This is going to be, I'm pretty confident I'll name this Evergreen. I showed this green last it's week. It's a beautiful green. And then. Like beautiful. That would be a nice sweater. Lastly, there's actually one missing, but that's okay. This is Roasted Pumpkin. It just reminds me, I know I've said this, in the fall, I roast, typically roast a bunch of sugar pumpkins in the outside skin. Yeah. It gets, it gets this like deep orangey orange. brown. Yeah. And then in the shop, I added, these are already listed. So this is wedding mints and these are on the 75% BFL, 25% nylon. So wedding mints, shady pines, ghost, and this is on BFL also ink block. So these are all ready listed. They're really pretty. So the difference between these two. 
Well, no, because they looked they looked like farther away. They look um, this one very now, similar. I want to compare it to this because I was like, oh crap, are they the same color? And this one is no. definitely more blue, where this one leans more green. Yeah. So you can see the difference between those. Yep. And this is almost a white. It's a very yeah, very it's... light yep. gray with a little bit of a yellowy undertone to it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you know what I didn't realize? What? I don't think I said the colorway name, because it kind of reminds me of this a little bit. Oh, that's... um. I didn't say the colorway name of my uh, fingering weight sweater. I told you everything else about it. This is in, like, I believe it's like right Milk and honey. honey. Yeah, Milk and Honey. Yeah, Milk and Honey. Sorry, everyone. So, oh yeah, I wish I could... F I want to find that Instagram post. Um. All right, well, while oh, you're looking for that... while I'm looking... Guys, Hudson oh, yeah. and West is having a sale on fifty percent off their cables. So you've seen we knit, I knit the Rat Hat, Ray knit the Oisin. So definitely go check it out. Yeah, um, it's a list of ten pa cabled patterns that are very popular for them. Um, they're regularly priced. I think about eighty-seven dollars for all ten patterns combined. If you were to buy them now, it's fifty percent off. They're like about forty bucks, forty-ish dollars um, for ten patterns. So, this is... It's so pretty. Somebody knit the... I'll cover her face. But, I mean, I shared her on our stories. Knit the At Dawn in two of my colorways. So, one was Stunning. Wild Orchid. The other one's really funny. It's Flame On. And Flame On that's is one, of my favorites. one that's really hard to capture. And it was one up until recently that wasn't very popular. So, I wasn't sure if I was going to dye it again. But... Look at the two of them together in the at dawn. Gorgeous. I think it's such absolutely um, gorgeous. Where's the story that I shared? She's really pretty too. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was an unexpected yeah. combo. So now I just need all of this to dry or finish drying. Some of it is, and then get it all up in the shop this upcoming week. What I've done, um in I'm sure that all dyers go through this. It's It can be a struggle sometimes figuring out what to dye and how much to dye. So the approach I typically take is I dye 12 skeins of one colorway when it comes to a tonal. I do it on fingering and then I typically do it on DK yeah. the same day. So I'm dying one color a day. So that just... It's really easy. It makes it for an easy dye day because I'm only mixing two different batches of a dye stock. But it also takes a lot longer to dye so many colors. So what I've done this week is I've only been doing the fingering and I've only been doing six of each skein. So I've been doing four colors a day. So I already dyed 12 colors this week. And I have 12 or four more probably today and four more tomorrow. So I've been able to do more colors. And I think by the end of next week, any tonal that I've had listed on the website will have some inventory again. So that's probably like, I don't know, maybe 16 to 20 tonals. Nice. That's yeah. Really so good. that that's actually really nice. And then I think in the future, that would make it easier to be like, oh, let me just do... I don't have to do such large quantities right of one color way right. have more variety on the site but it does also show me i need to add some more colors like yellows reds some darker grays which is nice to know you know to really develop that like that yeah base for yourself for and i have to do one more so from this palette i only have three of the four that i died to go together i'm missing so it goes Ghost, Wedding Mints, New Growth, mm. and then Shady Pine. So I need to dye up New Growth. For what? Well, that was the that's the combo that I used for that I'm using for the Geo Gradient. Right. But just because you didn't say that before. Yeah. Well, well, no, I'm saying just a half. You said palette. Right. That's the palette that I liked, but you okay. don't have to use it for Geo Gradient. Obviously. Oh, I see. So I'm just saying I like those four together. So I just want to um, get that fourth one dyed up. Apologies. All right. That's all the dye stuff. 
So wow. we are into. We have no. Pur- we didn't purchase anything, so there is no break in the. I do bank. have yarn on the way. Who does? We do. Where did we order yarn from? I didn't order yarn. It was different. From... Let me finish. That's not breaking the bank, though. What? We didn't buy yarn. Where do you think? Um, where do you think I got the yarn from? Let's see if you can get it right. I don't know. Go ahead. Where's it coming from? It's our monthly subscription. From oh. Owls and Ash. <laughs> Um, but we did get some owl posts. We got posts. some owl posts, which is super sweet. Uh, if you guys remember, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago, we were asked to speak at the sweater camp that is put on bar- darn it anyway. Um, yeah. So we did it via Zoom, and they we just got a lovely package yeah, from them. We did still water, Minnesota. So they sent us some swag from it. These number one cups are amazing. They're so good. I have these the are... card downstairs. Shoot, I can't remember who uh, who makes these um, these mugs. It's right it here. Is... It's by oh, perfect. Den... Den... Uh-huh. Denine Pottery dot com. We'll put the website. We sure will. I think it's D E N E E N Pottery dot com. Yeah, oven safe, microwave safe. They're so, they're they're really nice, good quality. Yes. Um. They also sent a little swag bag full of some things. So this is a nice tote with a zipper and some side pockets. It's got this the logo on it. It was January, was it not that we did that? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, darn it. Anyway, little notions or project bag. Two of those. Very pretty. There's a very cute um, notebook in here, which it oh, it's actually little yarn tags. Yeah. <gasps> I didn't look at this. Oh my gosh! Look, it's their um, it's like their program book. So in here, it had the camp schedule. Oh, this is really clever, oh. guys. Look at Kevin and Ray. Friday the second. We did it four thirty. All right, let's see what month that was. Um, so there's some notes like Patty Lyons spoke, so you can like write questions down. Smart things Patty said. I won't remember unless I write them down. When did we do it? Friday when? Paula the second? No. Friday at four thirty. It doesn't say the what. second. Friday so we did second. so it was um the first weekend of February. Yeah. So what's really cool is that it so it's how cool. Put together by <gasps> the yarn store. We have a page. I didn't even notice this. Oh, me neither. Um, by Darn It Anyways. And you can attend virtually or Aww. in person. And they have sweater classes and vendors. It was really lovely to speak with them and see some and know some familiar faces in the crowd. But. Oh, I can cry. Did you read this? <laughs> I Aww. I read that. Um on the website. I didn't know it was in there. I saw this on the website for it. This is the sweetest thing. I'll hold it up. You could just... I won't read it, but I'll hold it up in case anybody wants to pause Here, and, I, well, and read it. I can get it actually in the middle okay. of the screen. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. Thank you, guys. It's really nice to be asked. Yeah. Stickers. Um, humbling to be asked humbling. to do stuff like this. Because who the hell are we? And then you know, I'm like a, a gauge ruler. So... Yes, thank you to the team over at Darnit. Oh, that was a lot of fun um, for sending this because we had no idea that this was coming. No, I I had seen like an email and I was like, oh, uh, we did we order something? This is just um, the, the so it was things. definitely unexpected and very gracious of you to send that to us. We and our little note page it. was things I laughed about with Kevin and Ray. Oh, was it? Yes, cute. Um, so all that's left now oh, is what we that is the sweetest thing been reading and watching. I think I I have finished three books since the last episode. Wow. So. I don't know what I did. The first book I finished was The Silent Patient. Yeah. I believe. Right? Yes. Yeah. So The Silent Patient. I hope the music isn't picking up on here. And it shouldn't. YouTube's going to end can, up shutting us down. No, I can barely hear it when I'm up here. So it's by Michael... I'm, that's a lie. It is by Alex Michaelides. This is a thriller book. Apparently it's... 
I think it's going to be made into a movie because it says it's Hollywood bound. So this book um, had a great twist. I didn't see it coming. We were actually talking about it on Thursday. Um, I got to this part in the book right before the end and I'm reading and all of a sudden I'm like, oh crap, this sounds really familiar. And then it, it's crazy. It distorted the timeline. It's this re- it was really weird. Like it's really good. I would highly recommend it. It follows a psychotherapist who is trying to get a patient who killed her husband mm. 7 years prior to speak. She hasn't spoken since that event. Nobody knows what happened, why it happened. Um, this guy, he has wanted to get her to speak and figure out what happened pretty much since that point in time. So it is their story. Uh, you, but there's, you hear about, what is her name? Crap. I don't remember the character's name. She is a famous painter and her husband was a famous fashion photographer. And so you find out about their life. You also find out about the life of her therapist. Um, and it was very, very interesting. There were, as it kind of progressed, there were a lot of different suspects. And, you, you know, as us trying to figure this book out, you're trying to figure out who done it. Mm. Um, so I would highly recommend it. I thought it was really, really good. I also finished then the next book I read was a it was called In His Sights by Casey Wells. This is a male male thriller, we'll say. Another type of thing. Um, the two characters in this, one of them is a homicide detective. The other is a psychic who decides that he would like to help on a case. Um, it takes place in Boston. There are really no leads to the homicides that have been happening. Mm. The unsub. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the unsub is targeting gay males in the Boston area. And at the time that the book starts, the first hom- or fifth homicide takes place. And... Over a, I want to say it was like two to three year period of time with some cooling off periods in between each one, each victim. And that escalates pretty quickly. And the time frame between victims goes from like eight to eight, six months down to Mm -hmm. 10 days. So there is definitely a need to speed up and solve this. It was entertaining enough. I don't know if I'll continue on with the series. But I enjoyed it. It was well written. I thought the characters were great. Um, Yeah. And then I finished book three. It's huge. This is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Moss and the Court of Thorns and Roses. Look at the... This... How long? Beast was 703 no. pages. 703 pages. I devoured oh, the, this book. The text is a little bit on the larger side, no? No. No. Is this the one where... Oh, no. One of these books was weird where the first paragraph was in a smaller font and then went to like a normal font for the rest of the chapters. I mm. absolutely... I, I loved it. There were some moments in this book that i i actually got teary-eyed at one moment um it caught me off guard and i just love all the characters i thought i i really think that the world building and the character development in this series is really really good yeah i think people could be put off by this um because of the popularity of it i think sometimes we don't give things that are considered popular a chance because we don't want to be like all the kids who are doing it Mm -hmm. just read it 
Just read. Was the that you when it was popular, like back in the day when I was reading it? You didn't want to read it because you didn't no, want to be like everybody else. No, you know what? It's that I have. I feel like I read a lot of books with fairies or not fairies, uh-huh. fae in them. Yeah. And I was reading. I think I read two series back to back with fae, and I was just done with them. Yeah. This is a different. This is different than those. Like some of your typical characteristics of Faye are not followed in this series. So I would highly recommend this. I am currently then reading book four, which is a court of like ice and something. And I've been trying to figure out where like, Oh, I get it. So the wings and ruin, I try to figure out what this is in reference to and then the court of thorns and roses where's the thorn and the roses in that and then what was the other one mist and fury mist and fury so i try to figure out like where that kind of comes from in the book and this one just hit me so i'm reading the fourth book now which is more of a novella it's like 200 pages that's like a day's worth of reading sometimes compared to this beast and then i am reading which i'm really enjoying I started, and I bought this a really long time ago, and it's why I picked it up. How did it not update here? Um, Brandon Sanderson, The Mistborn Trilogy. Mm -hmm. It is book one, which is called The Final Empire. I, after my first night reading it, and I, you know, maybe I read about 10% of the book, I was sold. Yeah, it it comes you up. You were on telling a lot me about of, it, and I was like, "Wow, this sounds really cool." Yeah, the magic in there is very, very different than yeah. anything that I've read before. Um, and yeah, the first night I read about ten percent of the book, if not maybe less. And right before I went to bed, I was like, "All right, you sold me." I don't know why I didn't read it when I bought it, but it comes up a lot on you know, people's top 10 fantasy Mm -hmm. series. So it's quite a, it's about a 500 page book. I don't know. Kindle says I have like, it was going to take me 18 hours to read. And that felt really long. It does. But maybe there's a couple of chapters for, from another book. I don't know, but in there enjoying, I've been enjoying all of my reads lately. Awesome. Um, mine are pretty quick. I finished, um, mist of Avalon listening to that by Marion Zimmer Bradley it narrated by Davina Porter, whom I absolutely love. And um, it was interesting listening to this book for, I mean, this is probably the fourth or fifth time that I've either read or listened to this book. My first time listening to it, which was a completely different experience than um, than reading it. And, you know, I get more out of it every time I read it or listen to it. It's a very comforting read to me. Um, for those of you who haven't, you know, haven't heard of that or, uh, you know, I, I would just hi- I'd highly recommend if you're very interested in that old historic um, time period of like the 12, 1300s where you have castles and um, and the and how how everybody kind of fits into that court and what's going on in the world and magic and and different things and how religion, especially Christianity, um uh, starts building, um, like building into the world and how it, it takes some of the older pagan practices building in, you know, into their current practice and how it starts shaping the minds of the rulers and then everybody else that follows and kind of pushes aside some of those more, um, you know, in tune with, with the earth and, you know, and nature and, all of those things. So it's really an interesting, there's a lot of things that happen in this book on uh, like bigger levels, right? It's about women and empower women, but not being able to fully empower women in mainstream kind of this society because, you know, a woman is, um, needs to be like less right than a man. Like you can't get a divorce, um, here from a woman's perspective, but a man, you know, can divorce his wife and, different things and in, in how how women kind of really run the show but aren't kind of given that um 
that uh, you know the recognition in a way um but it's really really cool it's the it's a story about king arthur but spun from the lady of the lake's perspective and um and her growth and then eventual acceptance of what the world is realizing that in the end it's not a replacement like um catholicism or christianity whatever is not a replacement of the past it's just the new iteration of recognizing and appreciating still the um the world that she's used to so it was really kind of interesting there's a lot of imagery and stuff in there i, I highly recommend the book i thoroughly enjoy it just because it reminded me for whatever reason one of the most interesting classes that i took that actually talked a lot about religion was an art history class yeah it was well, because that's how so much of yeah. it is based you know there's so much of it in religion and I would highly recommend it to like take one. Just take I one. mean, my professor at the time, she was fantastic. Yeah, you loved that class. I like. Megan, I tried to find that class. Megan and I, I took it together. It, I know. And we both loved it. And she was, the professor was so cool. And she was yeah. a tattoo artist too. But like, you loved it. Like you learned so it, much. And like, even when we were walking down the street or something, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's because it talked about a lot of different things. Not it, just yeah, I mean, paintings. it talked about paintings and architecture yeah. and, um, you know, and you actually just like. I mean, everything that you could think of, you know what it was? It was, um, a discovery of witches. Like when they oh, went to Septors, yeah. the, the description of the castle or of their home, you were really, you learned so much. Like mm-hmm. I learned so much about that Yeah. prior to ever reading it in this art history class. Right. But so much of it had to do with, um, Christianity and Catholicism. Yeah. It, like well, there was a lot of crossover and a lot of um the way that it's depicted in in art and mm-hmm. because we talked a lot about cathedrals and yeah. how they were built um so we reviewed a lot of that too and actually how paints were made actually from gemstones i think that's really cool instead of yeah we learned a little bit about that and when in the art class that i needed to take for my bachelor's degree um but uh, you know a lot of a lot of the art in the day like depicted all of those things that you couldn't necessarily write about you know, in like mainstream books, because yes. a lot of that was yes. controlled. So it was the art, you know, and there was a lot of underground like art kind of stuff, and and you yeah, know, to appreciate that and to to get and get and the depiction of it is hidden in yes. some of the the murals. And there was one I remember; it was an underground. I want to say it was an underground sanctuary, and it was on the ceiling, and mm. it was supposed to be, I think Jesus, and instead it was a shepherd with all the sheep. Mm. type of thing um you know art is very uh it's it's very interesting it is you know from a from a storytelling perspective like yeah. a historical perspective anyway this is not what that podcast is no about. i know and i'm so looking, we i know um, we have to go because we have so to um, in 25 um yep i finished that highly recommend love it it makes you <laughs> have these conversations um i also finished throne of glass book one I really like that that's also by sarah j moss it's now a, you're talking really fast like micro machine man it's a complete series <laughs> <laughs> it's a complete series uh there's seven books i believe in the series uh, seven or nine whatever a lot it i will probably read all of them it does um it follows our main character the again it's very slow building i think sarah j moss uh with the the court series mm-hmm. same thing develops a very gr- good world like builds a very uh strong world where you can understand, but she takes her time doing that and understanding um, the nuances of what that means. There is a magic system in here, but I'm on book two currently, so that's what I'm currently reading. Um, We still haven't fully developed that or discovered that, so it is very much a slow burn. You're really focusing right now on on understanding the world a little bit and some backgrounds, and then the characters and some of these character motivations. But we haven't really fully developed how magic is going to come into play here though it is at some point going to because right now the premise uh, is that magic once existed fade once existed and now it's it's just been it's gone one day it was here and the next day it wasn't now it's completely outlawed even the talk of it and people who were able to tap into that magic no longer can tap into that magic so the outside world is trying to figure out how they can continue to like live their lives and have their jobs and stuff. Cause a lot of these people, cause magic was so well used that um, some of those people used magic in their everyday 
lives, yeah. right, as part of their job. So uh, really interesting background. I'm on the, the second book currently, like I said, and then I'm also listening to um, Outlander by, oh, shucks, uh, Diana Gabaldon. I'm currently listening to this because um, Davina Porter is also narrating this book. Very interesting. I'm connecting with the character. She's also a nurse from World War II. Uh, the premise of this is that she ends up getting somehow sucked through a portal and from goes from the 1940s into uh, the 1700s. As a woman, again, um, you know, out of out of time, um, and then with all of her knowledge as a nurse, is able to kind of take on the role of physician and and makes a, a place at the court. Learning a little bit of the background, I like the story. So far, I find it very interesting, and that's all I have to say about that. All right, and then watching one thing that we've watched. I don't know, actually, you have maybe. Our friend, one of our friends, started a podcast, <gasps> yes. and we met this Thank you individual. For saying this. I want to say two or three years ago at Knit in Public Day, when we were at Knit New Haven. That was the first time we met them. Yes, they drove from Massachusetts right. to come see us, and you're absolutely right. We went with Kim and Kate. Our besties from the knitting posse and that's the first time we had haven hot chicken it is so Not the last time um and now this individual is a dear friend we get to see her quite often our friend olivia has started a podcast it is called yarn stories with olivia she has two episodes out she is fantastic she's she super is. sweet she's a great knitter and crocheter she's also a librarian so she does talk about that and her and i have very similar reading styles and what we like with books one of the fa my favorite things about at the after we record a podcast is that sometimes she'll send me a message on instagram and be like oh my gosh you and i definitely have the oh, same really? style of books <laughs> yeah <laughs> the way you were talking um, about this one or like whatever i love it what i really enjoyed with watching olivia's podcast is she she knits things that i haven't seen yeah or i haven't mm, knit good point so you know it it kind of goes back to some t you know the book like my reference to it it's very popular sometimes popularity of a pattern turns people off but also in the knitting community the popularity of a pattern sometimes um, silences other patterns. You don't right. see them so often because we're all making the same thing. So it was really refreshing to see some other patterns that I haven't heard of. So definitely go check her out. Again, Plus, I love her stories. I, yeah. And if you know her in real life, it's exactly the same on the podcast. Like, she has the best stories. Like, there's not a silent moment when us, when we get no. together with her. No, we just um, get to chit chat. I love it. Yeah. So definitely check out again, it's Yarn Stories with Olivia. Um, and if we'll you like what you see, below. subscribe, like, and do all that fun stuff. Yeah. And then watching wise, it is the best time of the year for me. For you. <laughs> Ray tolerates it. I do. I tolerate it. Um, I used to be a fan, but I'm just not committed to these people. I'm committed I know to are. college basketball. It is March Madness. It has officially begun. Well, not officially. It is. So I've been watching a ton of basketball, men's and women's tournaments. So tonight at 6 30 we will be watching the big east tournament to see um to see uconn win because they will um, and then tomorrow selection sunday and for men selection monday on monday for the women and then it is a beautiful two weeks of basketball like every day so we've done that and then we have watched two movies we watched aquaman and the lost kingdom which was entertaining it was entertaining um I prefer watched, Marvel, Marvel movies over DC movies. I really do. I do. They're, they're just done better. Still entertaining, but... DC does a better animation than Marvel. I, I love agree. DC animated movies. I, I like DC's heroes and like their powers and like their backstories from the comics right. more than I do Marvel. But Marvel did a better job of the movies. Correct. And then Ray had never seen it, but I had and I just needed something on... And I think you were like just getting home and I was just about to put it on or whatever the case is. But we watched the first John Wick. Um... Good. It's a great action movie. Pure yeah. action. If you like action movies and haven't seen it, that's one to go. I definitely need to watch the other three. And then 
we have been watching Downton. <laughs> we are on... I don't think we started it. I don't have much time to talk about this, so I, I can't get into it. I know, but we I are on say. season four. I think we're about halfway through season four. It is six seasons and then two movies. So I'm excited because I watched this. Um, previously, I never watched the movies because Ray has never watched the show. So it's going to be fun to finish the show and then watch the movies. And there's a rumor that a third one is coming out. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. We're, what did you say? We're on season four now? Four yeah. of six. Um it breaks you. Uh, it breaks me. It broke me. Honest to God, I'm not even kidding you. Three. So, like, you know, it's not like a, a, an action-packed thing. There's you just, no action. It's all just how you relate to these characters. And, like, you feel like you're part of their lives. And it splits up the servants and, like, the upstairs and the downstairs. And, and what that – and thinking about, like, what that life must have been like. You know, like, there, to the point where you're Googling, like, are there real butlers today? Like, are these yes. houses, you know, still active today? How does this work? How did footmen work? You know, like, whatever. But you get so into these uh, these characters. And then, you know, like, history, tragedy just happens, you know, with, with the, the war and, like, the plagues and, and different things like that. And just how how fragile life is. And then, like, your main characters, they're not afraid to kill off these main characters. And there's one scene in the end of, of um, season three that was so disturbing yet filmed so i can't even Are you, describe anna that that was four that's the first oh, episode of first season, episode of season first or four. second episode of season four it was the way that it was filmed it was haunting it was yeah. i could cry because it was just it was i don't know for some reason yeah. like it just it broke me that one just broke me more than anything else and I, I mean, I know that this show has won a million awards, but just the watching how it was how it was filmed and and going back and forth, you didn't really see what was happening, but just oh, you knew, it was, yeah. So honestly, that night, it I was up all like literally yeah. all night. I could not sleep. I couldn't turn my brain off. Um, you just get so I I just get so attached to these characters. It was it's it's been very powerful for me. I, I really enjoy it. I I really love it. And it, you laugh, you know, I laugh. I. Yeah, I Just, laugh almost every episode. Yeah. I think, I think, and I say to Ray all the time, I wish there's so many of these phrases. Um, that we could still use. So today. one of the phrases that I love was in there because I did not know that it was, I, I think actually think I did, but forgot. I love when they, <laughs> when they said that he got bamboozled. Bamboozled. I'm like, wait, wait a second. Like, yeah. wait. But what I love about this, and I will say if you haven't watched it, um, definitely give it a shot and... Get past the first 10 minutes it, or even the first episode. It can appear to be very slow. Wow. It's a slow burn of a show. It, it is. What I find really interesting is the dynamic between the upstairs and downstairs. And I said this to Ray. It blows my mind at the respect that both upstairs and downstairs have for the other. If yeah. they're good people, there are bad people who obviously yeah, are jerks, yeah, yeah. but. The way that they respect each other and the way I think now that we think of a maid or a butler, we think of a servant and we have a very different perspective than what's depicted in the show. Mm -hmm. it, it's really more about employment of the people yeah. of the village. In well, it's a symbiosis. Sure. Like yes. the downstairs can't exist without the, the upstairs, upstairs, but the upstairs can't exist without the downstairs, right. right? They play off of each other. And and they take care of their staff in such an incredible way that, let me tell if our employers did that for us, yeah. you'd have a much happier staff. Like it, it's very interesting. So I would definitely recommend giving it a watch. Um, and I think that's really it. Yeah. I think so, that's it too we so good episode i feel like we i did it was longer than i expected i know it to, be, to be honest that's because we were pretty chatty we got really chatty at the end so yeah. if you are still here thanks for hanging around Thank you. and um check out our friend olivia join our knit along and our kid along and if um, you see any yarns that aren't listed on the website and you would like it just send us an email which is down below also down below is a link to a Google Doc with a bunch of coupon codes Great. that small businesses have made available to us for you guys. Right. So check that out. Oh, in um, our next episode, we have to remember to do a – we got um, gifted a couple of patterns that we, and we need keep, to do a giveaway. and I For the bobble. Yeah. So we'll um, we'll make sure that we draw 
the winners and have that also we'll add it to the calendar um so until then we hope that you guys have a good two weeks and we will see you in a fortnight bye or not all right we'll continue to talk so